Welcome everyone to episode 11 of the Texocity series presented by the 210 Culture Podcast and Pop Culture Radio on YouTube. How's everybody doing? Uh, miss me yet? Of course. I always take long hiatuses and expect people to accept me back with open arms. Of course. <laughs> so today's case is very recent, even more recent than the murder of Alexis Sharkey. It is the murder suicide case of Lindley Dodson and Barat Narunmachi. Uh, Barat held Lindley Dodson and other employees hostage at the Children's Medical Group in Austin, Texas. And after hours of holding them hostage, he kills Lindley and ultimately shooting himself. We're just going to jump right on through. Okay. Side note, I'm very excited because I am using a microphone stand. The one that clamps to the desk. I bought one. Yeah, I'm fucking legit. My office is not hot anymore. Part of the reason why I kind of didn't do much is because my office is fucking hot. Like H-A-W-T, hot. We recently installed a ceiling fan in my office and now it feels like it's fucking 50 degrees and I'm ready to do this shit. So who were Lindley Dodson and Barat Narunmachi? Well, let me tell you. Lindley Spot Dodson was born June 30th, 1977 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. According to her obituary, Lindley had a shining light of compassion, warmth, and dedication. She had a strong sense of caring for others. Accessible, funny, caring, determined, brilliant, and selfless. She had an impact on everyone she met. She attended St. James Episcopal Day School and graduated in 1995 at Episcopal High School. She attended Washington and Lee University, where she graduated magna cum laude in chemistry in 1999. While attending Washington and Lee University, she met her husband, Frederick Drew Dotson. After graduating at Washington and Lee University, Lynn Lee attended Louisiana State University School of Medicine in New Orleans and graduated in 2003. She would complete her residency in pediatrics at Vanderbilt University Medical Center and would later serve as an instructor at Harvard Medical School and as an urgent care physician at Boston Children's Hospital. Damn girl, you did a bunch of shit, man. I'm over here dying with just getting a fucking master's degree. I can't imagine all that bullshit. Good for her. Shit. You can do it, do it. Lindley got married to Drew in 2006 and moved to Austin, Texas that next year in 2007. She had three children, Shaw, Tucker, and Loretta. She worked as a pediatric hospitalist at Dell Children's Medical Center and was a faculty member in the Department of Pediatrics at Dell Medical School. Lindley would even be named Dell Children's Medical Center's top pediatric doctor in 2012 and 2017. She joined the Children's Medical Group in 2017 and was honored to become the practice owner in 2020. Damn, she had a bunch of shit going for her. Man, so much. She seemed like just this is a great person you know i don't <laughs> shit if i got murdered would people say that i was this like brilliant funny selfless person or would they be like yeah she's i my favorite thing to say is yeah <laughs> especially from fucking 90 day fiance with that fat guy and that and that girl and um she was like i like the view <sighs> she says this is I like the view. It's the best. And he's like, you're my best view. And she's like, yeah, <laughs> that's me. That's me in a relationship in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> so let's jump into Barat. Barat Narumanchi was born August 10th, 1977 in New Haven, Connecticut to Radha Bavatarini Devi and Professor Radha Ramana Miri Narumachi, who migrated from India to the United States in 1972. Bharat was the youngest child and came from a large family. Bharat had one brother and five sisters. It is said that Bharat did have a wife and daughter, but not much else is known about his family. In 2012, Hawaii court records show Bharat had filed for divorce from 
his ex-wife and was charged with domestic abuse in Hawaii. In one of the court filings, Barat described his ex-wife as, quote, a hapless person from her childhood who decided to marry me, a born U.S. citizen and thus gain what she coveted and dreamt of, the U.S. citizenship that eluded her when she lived in the U.S. as a student, unquote. There reminds me of that skit with the fucking puppets and then it's this guy and this girl and then the psychiatrist and the guy's like, I'm, I'm over here because I just want to make sure we have a language barrier. She speaks Spanish and I only speak English, but I just want to make sure that she loves me and she's not for my green card. And the psychiatrist is like in Spanish, hey, are you here for, are you here for the green card? Do you love him? And she's like, no, I'm here for the fucking green card. Like that's what I want. But like, I guess I'll tell him that I love him. And then towards the end of everything, the guy's like, fuck you, bitch. I know Spanish. Like you ain't getting a cent out of me. And she was like, no. The case involved the custody battle, which led to the two having joint custody of their daughter. The divorce records connected Barat to a North Austin home where individuals with the same last name lived, but Barat was not listed as one of the owners. Barat attended and graduated from Wilbur Cross High School at the age of 15 and earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical and Computer Engineering from Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Barat would join the doctoral program in ECE at the University of California, Davis, but eventually left the university to join a startup technology firm. He found the tech sector unfulfilling and started his education over. He decided towards a career in medicine and would graduate from St. George's University School of Medicine in Granada in 2008. Barat would become the first civilian doctor admitted to the residency program in internal medicine and pediatrics at Tripler Army Medical Center, Honolulu, Hawaii. Barat was even board certified by the American American Board of Pediatrics and a fellow of the American Academy of Pediatrics. On July 1st, 2008. Barat would start working at St. Vincent's Catholic Medical Center in New York City, New York. He was terminated in December 31st, 2009. While employed at St. Vincent's, he was a member of the Committee of Interns and Residents, which was a collective bargaining unit that was a party to a collective bargaining agreement with St. Vincent's. According to the court documents, there were disputes regarding his termination. Barat says he was terminated arbitrarily and illegally, while St. Vincent says he was terminated due to inappropriate and unprofessional behavior. Mm, bitch. I picked the second one for 500. On April 14th, 2010, St. Vincent's Catholic Medical Center would file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Barat submitted a claim for $24,700 to the bankruptcy court on September 24th, 2010, which was revised to $1,524,700 on April 1st, 2011. April Fool's bitch. Damn. To claim for $24,000 and come back to get 1 million? Fuck yeah. That's what I'm fucking talking about right there. So Barat loved California, specifically Los Angeles and Orange County. The best memories he had was when he was attending UC Davis. Barat will become licensed to practice by the state board in Florida and was also licensed to practice medicine in Oklahoma, Connecticut, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, A, and California. Barat specialized in internal medicine and pediatrics and worked mainly in California as a general pediatrician. Barat spoke Spanish fluently and was a great advantage to his practices. In 2012, Barat was also issued a physician and surgeon license in California, which was valid until August of 2022. Now, we're going to get into what happened. So January 2021, Barat left California and his job at Paramount Care Medical Group and moved to Austin, Texas six months prior to January 2021 to be closer to his family due to his terminal illness. Barat had been diagnosed with a type of terminal cancer. I couldn't really find out what it was. So as far as what type of cancer, I'm not too sure. But they did say that a week before the murder-suicide attack happened, Barat had applied for a volunteer position at the same medical office Lin Lee was working at, but was rejected. He had mentioned how he wanted to help kids as much as he could until his final days. Like he wanted his final days to be of him volunteering and being there for the children and taking care of them. Like I mentioned, it is said that Barat only had weeks to live with his family getting ready to provide hospice services for him. I'm sure at this point, Barat felt helpless. 
He didn't know what to do, feeling like his life didn't have any meaning anymore, if it only meant he was alive for a few more weeks. I couldn't even fathom to think, you know, we could die any day, right? But that's still unknown. You don't know if you're going to die tomorrow, next week, within the next hour. For Barat, he knew his time was, was running out. He knew he only had weeks to live. So I can't imagine how that must have felt for him feeling like, fuck, I only have a few weeks. What am I going to do? You know, there's no meaning to life anymore if my time is running out and it's out, like for sure. January 26, 2021. It was a normal start of the day at the children's medical group on West 35th Street near Mopac. Did I pronounce that right? Anyways, it's the year of mispronouncing shit. Get used to it. Um, in Austin, Texas. Barat walked into the office at 4.30 p.m. All fresco, you know, just like chilling with a pistol, a shotgun, and two duffel bags. Barat would hold five employees of the hospital hostages demanding for all of them to tie themselves up. One of them being Lindley. Fortunately, all except for one were able to escape or were eventually released. One of the employees was able to call 911 and officers were dispatched to the hospital. Police mentioned that there were no patients or children present during the hostage situation. Quote, several hostages initially escaped and others were later allowed to leave with the exception of Lindley Dodson, unquote, said police in a written statement. Victoria Ishak was one of the hostages during the attack, said, quote, he pointed his gun at my coworker and told her to go get the doctor. And then he points the gun at me and tells me to lock the front door, unquote. After hours of police trying to communicate and reach people, People inside the office, a mobile robot with a camera was sent inside and spotted the body of at least one person. SWAT team arrived and hostage negotiators attempted to make contact with Barat, but to no avail. After several attempts, SWAT breached the building, ultimately discovering two bodies with apparent gunshot wounds, Lindley Dodson and Barat Narumanchi. It is unknown why Lindley was targeted when they had not known of each other other than when Barat applied for the volunteer position but was rejected. Barat's family did release the following statement to CBS Austin. Quote, we, the parents of Dr. Bharat Narumanchi, wish to extend our most sincere condolences and most fervent prayers to the family, friends, and colleagues of Dr. Lindley Dodson. We share your grief for a life so senselessly cut short. We don't understand our son's motives or actions, but feel this time is best spent remembering Dr. Dodson and her contributions to this world. We are cooperating with the investigators as they seek to make sense of this tragedy. Unquote. Quote, the consequences of this action will leave with us forever, and we can only hope that faith, spiritual healing, and God's light will guide us through the darkness of this moment. Unquote. Lindley's family also released a statement, quote, we are all better because of her. Our only comfort is knowing she is now with Jesus and all the heavenly saints who are undoubtedly already looking forward to her first costume party. We are so grateful for the outpouring of love and concern, unquote. January 27th, 2021. Physicians around the area gathered in front of Children's Medical Group in the evening to remember Dr. Catherine Lindley Dodson. Patients and families who knew Dr. Lindley dropped off flowers at the clinic while some left signs and wrote with chalk on the sidewalk. By sunset, just before the start of the vigil of Dr. Lindley, the CMG sign was layered in flowers as more people stopped by to remember who she was and her work. So this was the murder-suicide case of Dr. Lindley Dodson and Bharat Narumanchi. I know this was kind of short. There's still a lot of information out there that we still don't know. Like, we don't know why he targeted her specifically. I don't know if it's because he found out that, you know, she was practice owner of the medical center. So he was like, well, fuck, I'm gonna shoot her. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing else for me. So I might as well just fucking just do it. So, and this is just a reminder of something that I want to reiterate it is so important to check up on your loved ones. Just because they tell you they are okay does not mean they really are. Barat's mental health deteriorated so quickly with all these obstacles that were happening in his life, especially being diagnosed with a terminal illness and having weeks to live. At that point, you don't care about jack shit because you know your time is coming. Mental health is important, especially with men. You know, we have to normalize that men also suffer from mental illnesses and mental health and they get depressed and they get stressed and anxious and all this stuff. So we 
as women have to be there for them too it's kind of a two-way street you know what i mean they're there for you you're there for them it's a 50 50 just because they seem strong and they seem like nothing's bothering them doesn't mean that there isn't something there so always check up always and as someone who struggles with mental illness like myself me yay please please um, check in on your loved ones don't ignore the signs and don't think that just because we say we are fine doesn't mean we really are sometimes just make sure to let your loved ones know that you are there for them and your ears are always open for a good listening without judgment thank you so much you guys are tuning in to this episode of the Texosity series my name is donna be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel Tutan culture and pop culture radio so that you guys can be notified of the latest episode of the Texosity series like i said my name is donna and i am your host and i will see you guys later bye <music>